David, peace. David, peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints in the chat. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. What did you hear last week? You was here. What we talked about last week? I was saying I ain't got nobody to tell me what we talked about, huh? Mm-hmm. That's right. He again. He the book say it was thronged. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen that word before. Throng. He being thronged in the cloud. That means somebody bumping up against you and all that. So he's in the cloud crowd trying to make it through. The woman she came through and she only touched his clothing. The book say the garment touched his clothes and then based off of him t her touching the clothes. He was healed. Remember, she had some type of disorder or something that was going on. She just kept bleeding. You know what I'm saying? Just kept going and kept going. And then so he touched, and then all of a sudden she was healed. And then not only just was she healed, but in the midst of him getting bumped by all these people, she, he felt that the power went out of him. So he asked disciples, who just touched me? And the disciples looking at him like, he lost his darn mind. They looking like, how in the world are you? All these people bumping into you? What you mean, who touched you, right? What else we talk about? We also talk about how, how the uh, multitudes was following him, right? We had great multitudes that followed him. And we talked about just, I mean, just breaking it out at the most basic level. A great multitude followed him, which makes them followers of Christ, which makes them darn Christians. And then we made a separation between the Christian and the disciple, right? The followers of the Messiah and the disciples. We know that the disciples he thoroughly explained, he expounded on all things to the disciples. He spoke to them. He gave them all the information. He made sure they understood it and explained the parables to them. However, when it came to the Christians, he didn't explain that thing to them. When it came to the followers, the great multitudes, he didn't explain anything to them. With them, he said, hey, this is what it is. This is the parable. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to focus on. And then he moved on. And so now the Christians are sitting there walking around. They looking like, I don't know what any of that means. However, when it comes to the disciples, he stops waiting till he waits till the Christians leave. He waits till everybody leave. Once everybody leave, then he come back and be like, so let me explain to y'all what I just said to them. So he talked about the parable of the sower, right? That's when you had the different types of soil, which represented us, right? Right. The people that hear the word and then the raven that snatched it up or the thorns that choke it out or the rocks that don't allow it to take root. Or soil that's good soil that brings forth 30, 60, or 100 fold, right? And then we also talked about uh, the parable of the wheat and the tear, right? And a few other parables that we talked about. And at the very end of it, he asks us, have you understood all these things? And the disciples responded to him, yes, because they were taught. That's what it means to be a disciple is that you were taught. So what separates a disciple from a Christian is the fact that you are taught. A lot of people follow Yahushua. A lot of people follow Jesus. A lot of people are Christians. A lot of people have it in their mind that like, hey, I love him. Right. Christians have this idea that as long as you've been convinced that Jesus Christ died on the on the on the cross for your sins, they think that is what belief is like in their mind. Belief is being convinced that he really died on the cross for your sins. Right. But that's not what the book say. We read it. Real quick before we get started, go to John chapter 3, verse, uh, give me verse 14. This is John chapter 3, verse 14. It's important to be able to use the book to find proper definitions. Because if you look at it, this is how Satan works. He take words and he give you the def, he make you understand the definition he wants you to understand. Because he know he can't do nothing with y'all's words. He can't do nothing with the word. 
So if the word got to be there, the only way he can confuse you is change how you see that definition of the word. So when everybody walking around here talking about believe, they're saying, oh, I've been convinced that there was a man named Jesus that hung on the cross for my sins. And they think that's the belief that the Bible is talking about. If you believe that, then by golly, you're going to heaven as soon as you die. Right? But in actuality, that's not the belief that the book is describing. It's not the, the book is not describing that you acknowledge or you are convinced that somebody died on the cross. Right? Those are facts. And you do need to actually be convinced of those things. But that's not the extent of the belief that the book is talking about. Watch this. This is John chapter 3, verse 14. Watch what the book say. You might be on mute. This is John chapter 3, verse 14. Watch what the book say. And as Moses list, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's right. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? So anybody who believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Did it say anything about being convinced that he died on the cross for your sins? But let's see what it continues to say. You have to believe on him. Watch this. Keep going. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he, he said, look, if you believe on him, you're not condemned. But watch this. But he that believeth not hath not has is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So this is simple stuff, right? If you believe on him, you are not condemned. However, if you don't believe on him, you have already been condemned. It ain't like you're going to be condemned. He's saying you already been. You condemned already if you don't believe on him. Right. So we got that. Just kind of think of it as like a math equation. Right. Believe on him equals not condemned. Right. Not believing on him equals you've been condemned already. Right. But now we got the definition of believe on him. We got the definition of not believing on him. And we know that that leads to either being condemned or already being condemned. I mean, not being condemned or already being condemned, right? So we need to now know the definition of condemnation. What is that? Let's look, let's look at it. And this is the condemnation. He says, and this is the condemnation. Watch this. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So now. You might look at it and be like, I believe I believe on him, <laughs> right? Like in your mind, you might be like, see, I think I do. I look, I affirm in my mind and I am fully convinced that there was a man that existed 2000 years ago that died on the cross for my sin. That's a fact. I believe that. Right. Can't nobody. Nobody can convince me that that is not a true statement. Right. Now, that exact same person can go living in sin. And guess what he just said? Read it again. And this, this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So now if your deeds are evil, right? And therefore you run away from the light and hide in darkness. Guess what that means? That is the condemnation. Like there's no other way around it. So now it changes your perception of what belief means. Because he's telling you, if you don't believe, you have already been condemned. Then he tells you, this is what that condemnation looks like. So now you can look at it and you can say, hey, my life aligns with what he's talking about when he's talking about his deeds are being evil and he's hiding from the light. Those two things do not equal. I don't care what you affirm in your mind. If in your mind you like, no, I know for a fact. I may be sinning and I may be evil and I may be running from the light and hiding stuff. But look, let me tell you something. With all my heart, I know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin. That's good. And you need to know that. But also, that is not belief. That is not the belief that the book is talking about. You're talking about something different than what the book is talking about. 
He's telling you when you don't believe the book, this is what it looks like. This is the condemnation that your deeds were evil and you didn't want to come to the light. But you love that darkness because your deeds was evil. That is the condemnation. And how do you get to that condemnation? Oh, that happens when you don't believe. Right? We have to make sure that we define stuff based off of the book. It ain't enough to just know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You're going to know that and go right to hell. Grab uh, Matthew chapter 7. It's Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. We just read this stuff. All this stuff we've already read. But these people don't darn pay attention. They tune in for five minutes. They think they hear something they like. Oh, that brother preaching there. Ain't heard a word. Ain't heard a word. Got the nerve to send me darn message. Hey, brother, let me tell you something. No, nah, you, no, nah, you, when you were talking about them Gentile boy, when you were talking about them Christian, oh, please, I'm talking about your Hebrew butt too. Send me no messages trying to, trying to, trying to. The only thing you heard to me when I was talking about some darn Christians. You think I'm about to respond to that foolishness? I'll leave all y'all just sitting there. I ain't responding to that foolishness. Why don't you talk to me about the book? These Hebrew Israelites ain't nothing but the, but half law keeping Christians. That's all they is. You a Christian too. No, I ain't no follower of Christ. I know. You a you a you a follower of, uh what they be calling them? Yahia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You a follower. What they be uh uh what what's the other names they be Yahusha. You know what I'm saying? You a follower of Yah Yahusha. Yahia. They be called Yahia. You know what I'm saying? Yahusha. And I ain't trying to make fun of them. A lot of people gonna call them different names and pronounce it different ways. You know what I'm saying? But you a follow whatever you you may not call them Jesus, you still a follower. You ain't no disciple. Don't make no darn difference. The Pam called him Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? Y'all followers of Yahweh Shai, Yahushua, Yahusha, Yahia. Y'all followers of all these different names, but you're not a disciple. Because to be a disciple, you got to be taught. There's no other way around it. You have to be taught. How you going to be taught? You ain't even paying attention. Only thing to make your ears perk up is when you hear somebody talking about a Christian. When you are a Christian. Silly darn butts. How are these people reaching out to me and not talking about nothing that's valuable? I don't want to talk about, oh, no, brother, let me prove. I know the, the black man is the Hebrew man. We've been off that. Like, okay, for sure. We know that. Act like you've been around. Goodness gracious. Learn the darn book. This book saves lives. That's all we're talking about. It's how to have our life saved. And now all we want to focus on is all this silly stuff. This is Matthew chapter uh, 7. Give me verse 21. We already read this stuff if you pay attention. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he okay. that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Okay. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? So hold on. They prophesied in the name of Yahushua. They cast out devils. They, it didn't say they tried to cast out devils. It didn't say they pretended to cast out devils. They said they actually took demons from being inside of a person and cast them out. Right? And what else they do? Many what? And many, and in thy name done many wonderful works. They've done many wonderful works. They, they, they prophesied in the name of Yahushua, not just prophesying. They're not talking about, oh, Allah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Muhammad. No, no, no. In the name of Yahushua, they prophesied. In the name of Yahushua, they cast out devils. In the name of Yahushua, they've done many wonderful works. Wonderful works means miracles. They do all types of miracles, various miracles. All these things they did in the name of Yahushua. Do you want me to believe that these people didn't believe that Yahushua died on the cross for their sin? Of course they did. But watch what happens next. And then while I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So if, look, if a man jump up and says, I'm having a vision in the name of Yahushua. Yah showed me this, that, and the other. And then with all the stuff that he said, it came true. 
We looked at him, we're like, dang, that's a prophet. Right? And then we all wake up our eyes and we be like, dang, we all in the kingdom. Y'all remember that prophet that was prophesying back in 2024? And he said that stuff and everything he said came true. Where he at? And everybody looking like, nah, he homeboy didn't make it. Right? If the prophecy that came true, if he didn't make it, you think these Christians going to walk in with a sin and butt talking about, yeah, but I believe you died for me. Y'all have to get y'all darn mind together. The word don't work that way. It ain't no just, I mean, I know I'm, I know I be messing up sometime, but at least I know Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin. I know that much. No, that's not what that's not what we're reading about. When the book talk about belief, it's not talking about what you think it's talking about. It's talking about believing that if the man tell, told you, you turn away from sin, if you do that, he'll cleanse you and he'll resurrect you in the end. He's saying, if you believe that, this is what it looked like. It looked like you have actually done those things. And a lot of people are not doing those things, but they think they believe. And that is deception. That is from the devil. And what we are here to do is teach the people. We are here to make disciples, not because people feel like it's no. We want people to be able to point to the word themselves. We won't be able, we want people to be able to hear the word and know that whatever this nutso is saying is not biblical. It don't come from our book. I want y'all to know it so well that no matter who talk, including me, you know how to divide it and say that is not in the book. I know what some good books sound like now because I read it all the time. I've been taught it my whole life. I've been taught whatever. But what he's saying over there, that does not sound familiar to me. And when you have that mindset and when that word is that much a part of you, can't nobody lie to you about nothing that matters. Somebody get off a little lie, it's going to be something that don't matter. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got time to be worried about all these little lies. But ain't nobody going lie to you, lie to you about this book. Let's go ahead and get to it. So let's go to uh, John chapter 6. This is John chapter 6. Give me verse 1. John chapter 6, verse 1. Right? Remember, the great multitudes is following them. We're going to open up John chapter 6. They still following this butt. Right? We still up north at this point. Right? So, you know, y'all remember Capernaum and, and Galilee, the area of Galilee. Think of Galilee like the county. Right? So we still in like Galilee County, I think. You know what I'm saying? We out there in Capernaum. Watch the book say this is John chapter six, verse one. Uh oh, did we lose brother T? Let me see. All right, you back. This is John chapter six, verse one. After these things. Thank you. After these things, Yahshua went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, which he did on them that were diseased. Yahushua right. So look, the all these people believed. You know what I'm saying? All these people looking like, I've seen this man cure people from diseases just by talking to him or just by looking at him or just by touching them. So they're following him because they they believe in the power. They looking at this power and they looking like. This look, a Christian will read what we just read. A Christian pastor will read this and they will try to fricassee this thing. I'm telling you, they will. I'm telling y'all they will. This you can hear. You can go to a church on any given Sunday and you can hear this be read. It's not, it's a lot of stuff we read during our Bible studies that you will never hear when you go to church. When you go to one of these rat hole churches, you will never hear a lot of the stuff that we 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 read from out of the book, right? This one, though, you will hear. You're going to hear this one. At some point when you go to church, you're going to hear where he say, hey, let me tell you something now. It's a lot of people that was following Jesus. That's what they're going to they gonna tell you. But they was following for the wrong reason. That's what they, he going to try to tell you. They were following for the wrong reason. You know why they was following them? Just because they wanted to be healed of diseases and they wanted to, they, 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 they wanted to see the power. They wanted to see him do miracles. They thought it was a circus. That's how they're going to preach it. They thought they were looking for entertainment in a circus. See, some of y'all in this church, some of y'all just come here for entertainment in a circus. Right? Not realizing 
is he prophesying against himself because he's telling the truth, right? They are coming there for entertainment and circus, but that is not what Yahushua is saying. This is not what the, what the writer of John is saying right now. He's not saying that, oh, they following him for the wrong reasons. They're following him because they believe in the power. These are the same people. The same people that are following him are the same people that's touching this garment. And Yahushua is saying, oh, your faith healed you. They truly have faith. They believe in him. Nevertheless, if their butt don't stick around and become disciples, guess what? Get your butt from around me. I never knew you. There's no cheat in the system. There's no side gate that you can come in. You can't climb through the window. It's only one way. It's only one path to get to where we're going. And the only path is if you serve the most high God and turn from all sin that defiles a man. There is no other way to do it. And this is what he's, he's trying to explain. So you got these other people. They're not doing anything wrong, these followers. Just like a lot of these Christians ain't doing anything wrong. They are on the path. A lot of Christians are on the path. The only difference is no one is teaching them. So they're never taught. I'm not mad at the average Christian. I'm, at, I'm, I'm mad at the average Christian teacher. Because that's who it's on. The average Christian teacher, all they got to do is be like, look, man, look, I know we got y'all here on Sunday. I don't know where we got this foolishness from. You know what I'm saying? But listen, I want y'all to understand the book. So instead of me just reading two verses and talking for three hours, let me read eight this week. And next week, maybe we get it up to 16. And next week, we're going to read a whole chapter. And the week after, you know what I'm saying? That you just grow with your crowd. Now, yeah, there's going to be some people that leave. And yeah, you might have to downsize because you can't pay the rent on that big old building that y'all built, right? But at some point, people will be saved. And even if nobody is saved, you will be honored by the Most High God for doing what you were told to do, even if you look at it like it's not successful. Even if you look at it like, man, I only got three members and I can't pay my rent here and we got to do it by live stream or we got to do it outside in the park or we got to do it wherever it is. Man, look, the most high God honors integrity. All the rest of this stuff y'all talking about, that's for y'all glory. Right? That's for y'all glory. This is uh this is John chapter six. Give me verse one. Watch what the book says. Verse Sister Danielle said when she is a Christian, she went for the choir. Brother T, you might be on mute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She said when she, she, when she was a Christian, she went for the choir. That's how a lot of them went. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them went. That choir, listen, that, <laughs> some choir now. Somebody, somebody choir now. You can't front on somebody choir. You walk in that thing, you hear from the outside. You know what I'm saying? You start walking up and you see Sister Karen. You know what I'm saying? And Sister Juanita right over there. And you look at them. And then you get to walk and you step in that door and it's like that thing hits you. Don't it? You open that door and you just feel all the air from the music. Just woo. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and they just singing and dancing and praising. And you sitting there and you walk in there and you looking like, and you can feel it. That thing feel it. And then you you be trying to resist that thing. You be sitting there like. I be the one with the solo. With the what? With the solo, when the sister get up and sing the solo, that oh, be cool. no. <laughs> oh no! You be like, man, did that. she hold the note? She got the spirit, and then she, but she talked to you before she do it. She, yeah. she be. Now I don't know if the Lord has done anything for y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When she gets to talking about what she don't know, oh, she got you right there. Now I don't know if I don't know if on this side of the room is when she tell you what she does not know. Oh man. Did she hit that note afterwards? And I... <laughs> then she take that breath. She stopped and she take that breath. Now, really what she's doing is taking a breath because she ran out of breath. She was holding that note too long. Then she stop and she do this. Mm, right that. Then she look back up and be like, because the Lord, she get the talking in the middle of her note. But the Lord been good to me, y'all. Ah, I be looking like, oh, Lord. that thing hit you there. That thing, that's why sister, that's how they kept sister Danielle there. 
that thing is that's how you're supposed to do it. That, there's a whole formula to the stuff they be doing. You get them little chills in your spine when they get to singing. You be looking like, oh, the Lord is moving in here right now. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is in here moving right now. And that's how they get you. Then all of a sudden, pastor come out. You know what I'm saying? Pastor come out. He open up that book. All the kids go right to sleep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All the kids go right to sleep. That's how you know word being, you know what I'm saying? The word, the, 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 uh, the word might get in preach. The, the kids go right to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, then you got the pastor. He start off and he calm it down. But he know, he know, he know, you know what I'm saying? He know how it works. So at the end of his sermon, when he want everybody to wake up and start giving money, that music come back. You know what I'm saying? Boom. You know what I'm saying? He do a, he do, when the when the when the organ start playing to the to the to the rhythm of his words, you notice that's why pe- pastors speaking rhythm, right? That's how they do it because they got a it's a whole orchestra. It's like a pastor can't just talk regular like I'm talking. How you how a man playing the organ? You know what I'm saying? The little gay dude that be playing the organ. How he supposed to know when I'ma say a word that he can play the organ to match? If I'm just talking like I'm talking right now, no. You got to have some rhythm. So what they do is they start to repeat. And so they say, and God, oh, better. Oh, oh, and, if, oh, oh. and you see, it's a beat to it. It's a rhythm. So now the organ player, he can jump over there because he know if just watch when you go. I'm a, Look, we should go on a field trip to church together because I want y'all to see the, the science of it. Right. You going to see right when the pastor. The gay dude that play the organ is sitting in the front row. He ain't thinking about that darn organ. He ain't he ain't sat at that darn organ since Sister Juanita sung the opening song. He stepped down once Pastor stepped up, right? Then he sat down, and then Pastor is getting to the end of his sermon, and he starts going, "Y'all think that, but maybe he start doing that." As soon as the gay organ dude see that, he jump up and y'all going to see him. Like if you watch this stuff on the camera, you see him run on the side of the little camera. He don't be trying to get caught by the camera, but you see him run by the side of the camera and he slide into his seat where the organ is. Then all of a sudden he start playing that thing right with the pastor because he knows the pastor is sending him a signal when he said, the, uh, nah, uh, he going to start. The pastor going to start hitting this. It's a rhythm, though. Right, it, and I'm telling you, and I, I'm not. And he gonna start wiping his head like this, and it down and wah, and wah. And then he trying to give him the beat, right? And after that, the organ dude gonna start playing it, uh, boom, uh, boom. You know what I'm saying? And when that thing hits you, you be thinking like, pastor ain't saying nothing in real life. If you read the words that the pastor was saying, you would be like, oh, this simple stuff. You can't make a Facebook post or an Instagram post out of what Pastor is saying, right? However, when that organ hit the right note at the right time on beat with the pastor, oh, it's darn, darn magic. You know what I'm saying? Darn magic. You'd be like, you know what? Take my little $20. You know what I'm saying? Just take it. Just get here. Take my little $20 because you know what? This is a show. This is a show. We not here for a show, though. So, we here to teach the word, right? What's going on? The dude playing the organ is the gay dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You gotta, you either gonna Why? usually no, because usually they be, they be, you know what I'm saying? Most of the time, yeah, we be saying some wild stuff. You okay? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why y'all be quite. Look, y'all want we could do a field trip to a church right now, and I will bet money. That the dude playing the, uh, the organ is a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He going to have the pink socks. His thing going to be high like this. And when he walk, he going to walk a little bit on his tippy toes. Like, just a little. It ain't going to be, when he walk, it's going to be a little bit on his tippy toes. And y'all going to look at him because y'all don't want to lose the bed. Be like, but he might not be. You don't know for sure. And I'm going to let y'all have it. And then a couple weeks later, after I do my research, I'll be like, there the picture is. And he going to be with some guy holding hands in Facebook. On a website called uh, Plenty Fish. <laughs> What's the other one? Grinder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something like that. You know what I'm saying? On one of the websites where they, you know what I'm saying, they do stuff they ain't supposed to be doing. I was doing an investigation today. It was a, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a guy who was disputing. This man is spending, he's spending $500 a 
400 $700 on this website called Plenty Fish. So I'm looking, I'm like, what is Plenty Fish? We try to type it into our computer. Our, our job don't let us even go to it. So I'm looking like, oh, let me do this on my phone. I might get in trouble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we about to do this on my phone. I have a feeling there is nothing good from this guy who's spending $1,000 a month for this website. So I look at it, and it's a dating website. So I'm looking like, oh, and then after after he stopped using them, he went to another one called Meet Something. Meet something. I was like, oh, he's he's got the extra package. He's not like he's trying to he's trying to get it done out here. But that's how these people are. And some of them play the organ at the choir. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to tell y'all. All right, let's keep going. We just on John chapter yeah, six. You rambling? Yeah, John chapter six. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all start talking about Christians. I have to become one. This is John chapter 6. What verse? 3. Yahushua went into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples in the Passover. A feast of the Jews was nigh. When Yahushua lift up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, when shall we buy bread? Oh, wait, hold on. The feast of what? Passover. So listen, I want y'all, we've already talked about Passover before, didn't we? Right? So at the very beginning of the book, we talked about Passover. Y'all remember in Luke chapter three, right? It said Yahushua was 30 years old. So that first Passover came. This is the next Passover. Right? So I think it's like John chapter three. That's Passover. Maybe John chapter two. Yeah, John chapter three is Passover. And then now you have this next Passover. So that's at least one year. Right? So Yahushua started when he 30 at this point. He about 31, right? He about 31. It's important to know because there's a lot of Christians that just believe, oh, yeah, he only preached for about a year. And it's like, no, he didn't. You know what I'm saying? No, it's no way to, if you read it, you there's no way for that to happen. But the reason why they can come up with that is because they don't know the law. So when they see Passover, it don't really mean anything to them. We know that there's one Passover every year. So if this is the second Passover, it's at least been two years. I mean, been, been at least one year. He's in the second year. Keep going. In the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh, and Yahushua lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, and he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? This he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. <laughs> Look, so Yahushua was like, hey man, it's a whole lot of people, because the great multitude is following them. And so he looked on them, and he's looking like, oh, these people got to eat. We got to feed these people. So yeah, he said, look, what, what, uh, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? To feed all these people. You know what I'm saying? How are we going to do this? Where he asked the disciples. Them? Huh? He's like, where shall we buy all of the, buy the bread to feed it? Yeah, he's like, man, that's a lot of people. What are we going to do? How are we going to get, how are we gonna get this done? Right? So he asked the disciples, but he really asked them just to test them. Because he, he already know what he about to do. But he asked them just like, man, like, what are we going to do? He's trying to set it up. He's trying to make sure when he do what he do, everybody looking like, dang, that's a bad boy. So he's like, man, what are we going to do? He's waiting for the disciples to be like, uh, we can't afford to pay all these people. You know what I'm saying? That's what he. That's what he's trying to set the whole situation up. So he asked the disciples, although he already know what he about to do. He asked them, "Watch this." So Philip answered him, two hundred penny worth of bread is not suffice for them, that every one of them may take a little." Right. So Philip was just looking like, "Now listen, we got how much you got? How much you got over there? Look, this is all the bread we got. It ain't no way that this gonna be enough for everybody here." That don't even make logical sense that we're going to feed all this great multitude of people with just this little bit of bread. I don't know, y'all. Sure. What are we going to do? Watch this. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Mm -hmm. Y'all sure said, make the men sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. Right. So he told him, he said, hey, look, everybody, sit y'all butts down. Right. We got five barley loaves, five loaves of bread. Right. And then we got how many fish? Two, two, two small fish. We got we got two little fish. The one with the eyeball still in it. Right. And then we got five barley loaves. And then we got thousands of people. Right. But we all looking like, okay. 
no, I, no, I, no, I trust you, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I trust. I'm with you. I trust you now. Did we leave? Did we lose T again? No, I'm right here. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He looking like, no, nah, I trust you now. But I don't know if this is enough for everybody. Right? Watch what y'all should do. This is a bad boy. He know he bad, too. That's my, that's my thing, because y'all don't be knowing. Y'all got to pay attention to him. He asked him, man, what we going to do with all these people? You know what I'm saying? He asked him as if he didn't know what was going to happen. You got to understand, like, that's the God you're dealing with. Like, all these conceptions that we got of him, like, you got to factor this real stuff in. You got to factor in, like, okay, this is what I think of him. But he's also the type that would be like, what we going to do? As if he don't have an answer, just so you could be like, no, nah, I don't think that's possible. Then he can slam it on you like, bow, watch what I just did. <laughs> you got to think about that when you live in your life. When you live in your life and stuff be looking like this is impossible, you have to think about God is the type of God that wants you to think that before he do something crazy. Right? If you know that, then stuff affects you differently. You have a different expectation. We got expectations because these people lie to us all our lives talking about, oh, God will always take care of you. He will never forsake you. He will all this stuff. They, they saying stuff in the book that doesn't apply to us. It's in the book. You can point to it. It is word. It don't apply to your sinning butt. Your hypocrite and butt. It applies to all these other people that's doing the right thing that we read about in the book. So now we have to look at it and say, how does y'all deal with a person that's just learning or deal with a person that's sinning? Or deal with a person that's rebelling. Or deal with a person that's trying their hardest but not quite there yet. Right? How does he deal with them? Well, this is what it looked like. Hey, y'all. What we going to... Well, people got to eat now, right? What we going to do? Oh, man. It's going to take a whole lot of bread to feed them. How much we got? Oh, uh, no. There's a young boy over there. He probably got... What you got? Five? He got. He said he got five loaves, y'all sure? About five loaves. I say we tell... Everybody in this section to go and everybody in this section, maybe we keep these because it seems like they are paying attention the most. We might as well feed them. Like they, the disciples out here probably trying to solution it, trying to figure it out. Like, I don't know, we ain't gonna be able to feed everybody, but if we cut it up into small pieces, everybody at least gets something. You know what I'm saying? They they, they trying to they probably trying to come up with something. Y'all, she was like, tell everybody sit down on the ground. Just go out there and tell them everybody sit down on the ground. They looking like this man crazy. Hey, y'all, he said sit down. No, no, we about to eat. Now, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be enough for everybody, but, but he said, just, just go ahead. We'll figure it out. Just sit down. Everybody sit down, right? So everybody sit down. Y'all sure was sitting there. He's like, I like to imagine y'all sure was sitting there like this, like he's trying to figure it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they trust the man because they looking at him like he's a wise man. Nobody ever really know what he's thinking. So they looking at him probably like, all right, well, just do what he say. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how it's going to work out? He probably sitting there like, mm. I like to imagine he was counting them like, you know what I'm saying? Counting the people like he's trying to come up with something. And then he look at the loads like. Count them again for me because I don't really. He, gotta make that, he probably made it dramatic. Then all of a sudden, watch this. Yahshua took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he, dist he, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were sat down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered from they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then right. They... So look, Yahushua took them five loaves and the two fish, right? And he is like. I'm going to give it to y'all, and y'all go take it to them. So he just start breaking off pieces. Like, here you go. Take them his plate. There you go. Take them his plate. Take her plate to her. And he just handed it out. And so they just going, getting the plates, and taking it. Going and getting the plates, and taking it. By the time it's over, everybody got something to eat. And then after that, he told them, uh, get this basket. We started with five loaves, two fish, right? Thousands of people out there. He said, hey, get this basket. Go make sure you pick up all the leftovers. They go get all the best. How many baskets they fill? Twelve baskets. Well, with these they, they we start off with five loaves. We can hold in one arm like this, right? They come back with twelve baskets of trash, like of like like I bit half of the bread. You know, our kids like eat half of it and then go play. I bit half of the bread. 
they came back with 12 of them things, 12 baskets for a half. How do we have this card, like leftovers, more than what we started with? So the people looking at this like, not the people, because the people would know, but the disciples looking at this like, oh, no, this guy is different. Like, this is just, this is like, what are we even doing? You know what I'm saying? This is him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we even doing? Watch how they react to it. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Yahushua did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. Right? He said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. And why would they think that? That's what Moses told them. Moses told him it's going to be a prophet that's going to come, that's going to give y'all the word of Yah, and whatever word that he put in him is going to be required of you if you don't listen to it. They're like unto me. Like, right? He's going to be just like Moses. Moses gave the people the manna in the wilderness, and they didn't have anything lacking. That's a good point. Right? That's a good point. Moses fed the people out of nowhere. Right? Y'all sure going to tell us later in this chapter, y'all sure going to tell us it wasn't Moses, though. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, Moses gave y'all, but it wasn't Moses. You know what I'm saying? Y'all sure would be banging. But look, you got to look at another thing, too. We had a prophet. His name was Elisha. Elisha. Right? And Elisha also, grab, uh, grab 2 Kings chapter 4. This second King chapter four, we can start at verse one. This Bama said, how long do y'all should teach? We're going to see. So far, it's about one year. It's at least one year, right? So far, it's about a year. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear Yahuwah, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Mm -hmm. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thine house, in the, in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of thy neighbors. Even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all these vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she right. So look, she uh, she said, look, only thing I got left, it's a time of famine, right? So don't nobody really got a lot. So she said, man, look, the only thing I really got is a pot of oil. And he said, okay, look, go ask all your neighbors. To see if they'll let you borrow a vessel. In other words, like a little, you know what I'm saying? Like, like something to carry something in, right? Just see if they'll let you borrow a vessel. Go get the vessels. Bring them in, whatever you can get, right? And then close the door behind you. He gave her very specific instruction. Go borrow some vessels, bring them in, and then close the door behind you. Watch this. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay the pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. All right. So one pot of oil. They kept pouring it out. But what that will one pot, it just never ran out. They could just keep pouring it. And as many vessels as they were able to find. They were able to fill them things up with oil. So then after that, he looked at her and he said, OK, cool. Now that you got all that oil, go sell that and you can pay off whatever you got to pay off. Right. So our people who know our history, who are familiar with this story, they look at what Yahushua did and be like, that sounds mighty familiar. You know, what I'm saying? I remember another prophet that when he had something that was just a little bit he caused it to like be infinite he could just keep going keep going as long as they had a vessel just like Yahushua did with feeding the people and now there was more left over than what they started with just like Elijah I mean Elisha keep going watch this because that ain't the only thing that he did that's similar to Yahushua right watch this and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem 
where was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. Right. So he used to always walk this one path. Right. And there's a lady that's on this path and they had a house. Her and her husband got a house. But every time this lady would see Alicia, she'd be like, hey, boy, come on over here. Come have some bread with me. Right. So Alicia would be like, man, I got somewhere to go. And she'd be like, come on, please just stop for a little bit. Talk to me a little bit. You know, I'm an old lady. Come talk to me a little bit. Have some bread with me. So then he had stopped and he eat bread. And it became like a little tradition. Like every time I go down this path, hey, he says, how you doing? Okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Let me stop and have some bread. They eat bread together, right? They become good friends from that situation, right? Keep going. And she said unto her husband, behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Right? Yeah. So look, this is after he's been passing by a lot. Then she goes to her husband and says, I perceive this is a man of God, right? This is why a lot of guys be darn creeps, right? But this is why I don't buy that, oh, if you a man of God, you need to talk to her husband first before you meet with her and talk to her. That's not what we read from the book. Now, people are creeps. It's the same reason that we don't really want males, you know what I'm saying, teaching our kids, right? You, like, if you, got, if you go to your school, you got a daughter, you go to your school, and you got a male teacher, you might be like, you got a young daughter, you got a male teacher, you might be like, mm. that's why you don't look, really see a lot of male teachers in, like, elementary and all that. Because, you know, everybody's scared of these guys that be creeps, right? But nevertheless, although it's going to be 20 female teachers and one male, right? Or maybe 30 female teachers and one and a half male, which means you got one and then you got like one short guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, then, okay, that's how we got to rock with it. But it doesn't mean that male teachers are not good teachers, right? If you look at, if you look, a lot of time, these male teachers get a lot more respect from the children, right? Because it's a place for a man to teach. It's just that men have to uphold their responsibility properly, right? And so since we've had a, 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 a recent, I don't know how recent or whatever, but if you had, you had a recent history of men taking on these positions as pastors and leaders and all that, and then they prey on people wise and prey on people, you know what I'm saying? Be trying to get them in and be like, oh, yeah, let me talk to them and then do whatever they're trying to do with them. Now it disrupts the trust, right? So that's why people got to come up with, oh, no, you shouldn't be doing this, that, and other. But the man of God, you can see that she was having lunch with this man, this, that, and other, all this stuff. No funny business whatsoever. It wasn't even a, a, a thought of no funny business. And all of a sudden, he, she gets up, and after she said, read it again, watch this. Let's see how many times he passed by before she talked to her husband about it. And she said unto her husband, behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Right? He always passing by. And they already told you that when he passed by, she had bread with him. This man that's always passing by, I think he a man of God. This is a man, this guy's special is what she's saying. Keep going, watch this. They develop a good friendship, right? Watch this. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set up for him there, for him there a bed and a table and a stool. And a candle. Right? This is another thing that's going to show you that men today, the little weak boys today, are a little different from men back in our time that we're reading about, right? Our ancestors, imagine today, it's a man. Man of God, right? Pastor, he walked by, your wife, step out, and she have lunch with this man every time he passed by. Already, most men today gonna be broken and jealous. Like, mm, I can I can teach the word too. You know what I'm saying? I know a little bit of the Bible too. You know what I'm saying? It's that another, right? Then after that, right? She come to you and be like, Man, that man, he passed by all the time. Oh, he's special there. That's a special man. Baby, you know what we should do? We should build him a little house in our backyard. Oh, what <laughs> you you want to do? You want to do what with the with the random dude that most do today? They be like, man, you don't even know he probably lying. You don't even know they. I'm telling, they gonna throw so much salt. That's what we used to call it back in our day. We used to call it throwing salt. What y'all call it now? When somebody hating on somebody, they they be throwing. Now nah, shade ain't really shade is. That's kind of back in our time. Shade is shade is kind of us too. Hmm. Hate? Y'all still use hate? Hate is definitely ours. So we got, so everything y'all saying, we still own it because we got shade, hate, 
And we got uh, salt. salt. <laughs> Listen. So listen, you know what I'm saying? They would throw shade on this guy. They would hate on this guy, right? And you could see that her husband don't take that, that don't take that response. Because the men were just built different. Right? A lot of our a lot of our men today is just raised by, you know what I'm saying, raised by women that, you know what I'm saying, don't have men in the house sometimes are raised by women who's been dominated by this media society that doesn't represent a male's point of view. So then what you do is you end up with women who have a weaker mindset because they not they not they not aligned with with a family a family structure, right? Even if even if you single, you should be aligned with a family structure. Even, even if you decide I don't want to have kids, you should be aligned with a family structure. Family should still mean something. Like you don't have to be a mom to be a fa to, to understand family, right? So family should still mean something. It still should should be important to you, whether it's your cousin, whether it's your mom, whether it's your sister, whatever it is, or whether it's your children, right? But people are not aligned with that because you know what I'm saying that we 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 just are raised in, in a weak time. Just know, We've been just don't know the law like in our in our day. In the law, we have respect unto leaders. We have respect unto men of God. It was right. respect unto people that did things, did the right thing. He would be looked at. He would have the respect that a priest or a Levite would have because he's a prophet of God. Yep, that's right. Keep going. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set up for them there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in here. And it fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, her servant, call the Shunammite. And when he called her, she stood before him. And she said unto him, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? What is thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily she has no child and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, All right. Nay. So look, she thought she couldn't have no, no kids. And on top of that, her husband was too old in her mind. So... Alicia was like, man, this lady has been kind to me. He asked his servant, he's looking like, what do you think we could do for her? You know what I'm saying? What do you think could be done for her? He is like, man, he, uh, ain't got no kids and uh, her husband old. He's like, got it. So, call her in here. And she came in. He is like, Lie. what? My bad. Oh, yeah, he, she, she came in. He is looking like, he is looking like uh, around this time next year. At the time of life, you have a son. So she probably looking at him like, "What?" Well, actually, watch what she say. Watch this. I think she say something like, "You kidding?" or something like that. Watch this. And he said, "About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son." And she said, "Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid." Yeah. So she looking like you joke. That's like you know how people be like, "You lying." You know what I'm saying? Be for real. That's how he was back in our day. I was like, be for real. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Oh, so y'all just y'all just be baby us. That's all it is. Yeah, dude, we but look, I think it was like keep it gangster. Keep it gangster. Yeah, I like, keep that thing gangster. Like be for real. You know what I'm saying? Like you lying. Right? So that's what she said. She like, look, man, God, do not lie to me about this. You don't know how much I want a son. You need to stop playing. Right? Watch what happened. And the woman conceived, and the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother, and he sat on and he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Right. So now she has her son. 
he grows, right? A lot of time has gone past, right? So you got to imagine Alicia, he doing his normal route, but this is over the span of years, right? She yeah. have her son, everybody happy. She probably super appreciative. She taking care of him. He still got his little room whenever he come by. Her son, he working out in the field. Pops is sitting there listening to his boy complain. So the boy complained like, man, my head hurt. Pop's probably looking at him like, yo, lazy darn butt. So he tell him, take the boy in there to his darn mama. Just like any dad would, right? Take your darn, I'm out here working. Get your butt in there to your darn mama. You darn mama's boy. You darn weak little. Good. All I ask you to do is darn pick up the darn. Get your butt darn in there. That's how I like to imagine he did, right? <laughs> so then he went in there and then he sat on his mama and just like a mama, she gonna look, baby, come here. Your head hurt. And so she rocking with him. She's like, mm -mm, I think this is serious. So she probably calling her husband like, we need to do something about this. And her husband probably in the field like, ain't nothing wrong with that darn boy. Just give him a little, you know what I'm saying? Give him a little, little uh, uh, olive oil and a little honey. He'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? So now he working in the thing and she rocking, but she rocking with him for hours because he over there struggling and he died. Probably like a brain aneurysm or something, right? He, he sit there and he just died. So the woman, you got to imagine in her mind, why would God give me this baby? Just to take him from me, right? So then she take the baby and take him to the bed that she built for the man of God and just lay his her baby's dead body in his bed like you deal with this. You did this. You, this is a sick joke that you did, right? You prophesied that I would have this baby and I did have a baby, but you didn't tell me nothing that my baby was going to die this soon, right? He ain't nothing but probably eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, something like that. Who knows? We don't really know. But you know what I'm saying? He, he's a young kid. You know what I'm saying? He's sitting there like, you know what? You deal with it. So she laid him down on the man of God's, on Alicia's bed, right? In his little chamber because they built a little room for him. They laid him down on his bed. And let's see what happens next. And she called her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men in one of the, in one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither the new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. Right? So the husband at this point don't even know his son is dead. But the woman is looking at it like, listen, give me a donkey. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like a woman today asked for a car. He's like, give me the keys to the car. I just got to run into town real quick. Right? He's looking like, why you? Why would you go to the man of God today? It ain't, it ain't the new moon. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't no special event. Why are you in a rush to go? You know what I'm saying? This, that. So now he probably suspicious. Like, all this time you've been cheating on me with the man of God? You know what I'm saying? He's probably a little suspicious now. Like, what's the rush today? She's looking like, don't worry about it. It's going to be good. Because she know her son just died. But she looking like you have to. She about to go to Alicia like you have to deal with this. Right? Watch this. Let's see what happened. Is she about to saddle up the donkey? What happened? Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, drive. And go forward, slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to, uh, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near and said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me. Right. So listen, me. this is how this happened. Alicia saw her from far off. He saw her coming. And he looking like. That's that's homegirl. He's like, all right, look, go run up there and figure out because she coming at him, but she's still a distance off. But he can kind of see her. He's like, go run and meet her. And make sure, just ask her, is, is she all right? Is her husband all right? Is her baby all right? Right? And so she, his servant ran out and met her. And he asked her them questions. And she responded, oh, no, everything good. So it's this, she hasn't told nobody what the problem is at this point. Right? Everything good. So then she kept going, riding fast, trying to get to Alicia. Then she finally get to Alicia, and she jump off the donkey and run down, grab his feet like this. Like, just so imagine her just on the ground, bow to him and just grab his feet, right? So then she grabbed his feet and then his servant run up and trying to pull her back like, hey, get off because that's his master. You know what I'm saying? Like part of his job is to protect him. So he's in there. He's like, hey, hey, hey. But then Alicia was like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, leave her alone. 
There's something wrong with her, clearly, and I don't know it. So he's saying God hid it from me. There's something wrong with her, but God haven't told me what this is. He used to, the most high God kind of keeping him on point with everything. So he's looking like, no, nah, God ain't, he ain't revealed this one to me. I don't know what's going on. Right? Watch what happened. Keep going. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not? Right. She said, did I come to you and ask you for a son? You have to imagine this woman's hurt and pain. Did I come to you and ask you for a son? Right. Did I ask you for these things? What else happened? Watch this. Did I not say do not deceive me? Didn't I tell you don't play with me about this subject? Don't you know how much I wanted a son? Didn't I tell you do not play with me about this subject? But you give me a son and he die on me? You knew this. In her, his mind, in her mind, you knew this was going to happen. Or you should have known. Watch this. Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. So and then he told the servant. He was like, she, she in the middle. I like to imagine she was in the middle of talking. Did I ask you for this, baby? You knew I wanted this baby and you played with me about this subject, right? At that point, she didn't even have to say it. He knew the baby darn dead. So he said, okay. Hey, God, look, take my staff, run. Don't you say what's up. Don't say hi to nobody. Just go. And if anybody tries to say hi to you, don't even turn your darn head. Keep moving. In other words, don't get distracted. You got one place to go. Get to the kid. Once you get him, put my staff where on his face? Put my staff in thy hand and go thy way and be, uh, and put it upon the face of the child. Yeah, so then put he said put his staff on the face of the child, right? Keep going. Watch this. And the mother of the child said, as Yahuwah liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore, he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. Then Elisha was coming to the house, and behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. Right? So Gehazi, his servant, was faster. Right? So the woman and Gehazi went ahead of them. He did exactly what Elisha said. Right? Thing didn't work. So he came out, and, you know, Elisha probably taking his time. Walking, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all remember when y'all sure y'all sure they came to y'all sure y'all remember y'all sure last week y'all sure they came to him and they said, Uh, my daughter is dead, and then y'all sure start getting thronged by all the people. He's taking his time, he thrown, and the lady touched him. He looking like, Who touched me? and they looking like, Man, this that another, but it's some it's somebody dead daughter that they asked you to come. Y'all remember he got there late, and then what they say because at first she was just dying. He said she is asleep, but they it's like, it's too late. She died. Right? That's kind of how Alicia doing it. He sent his servant in there, but Alicia kind of taking his time. They running. They, you know what I'm saying? Alicia kind of taking his time. Like, yeah, I'll get there when I get there. You know what I'm saying? Then he, they lay the staff. They come out, and Alicia's still on the way. And they kept, they meet Alicia. They looking like, child didn't wake up. You know what I'm saying? Child's still asleep. You know what I'm saying? The child didn't wake up. Watch this. Keep going. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto Yahuwah. So it was only them two in the room, the son and Elisha. He shut the door. He says, just us, right? That's similar to what Yahushua did. You remember when Yahushua went in, he is like, I want everybody out except for the parents, right? And then he took only them in there and shut the door, right? Elisha just did it with them too, though. He was like, nobody else in here. Shut the door, right? Watch this. Keep going. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Right. So then he put it and he pretty much given the child mouth to mouth. Right. So he got he got his lips on the child's lips and then the child's hands is like this. And then he put in his hands on the little baby's hands like that. And then he stretched himself over the baby. So like he got his body heat and everything against the, the baby. Right. And when he's doing it, it's not a baby. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Probably it's a Kai or it's a hard side. So, you know what I'm saying? He do that. And then what happened? And his skin waxed warm. Then all of a sudden, the kids start getting warm. Watch this. Then he returned 
and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Right. So after that, the child starts start, start, start sneezing. How'd you sleep, though? You know what I'm saying? How'd you? How'd you? Seven times. And then the child opened up his eyes after that. He resurrected the kid. Right? So when Yahushua is doing it, remember last week, Yahushua resurrected the little girl. Then now, Yahushua is doing all these other things. When this stuff is happening and then he feed all the people, the people are sitting here looking like, man, this is like Elisha. And Elisha is one of our baddest prophets, right? Elisha, Elijah, like them is two prophets that's just like, they did miracles that we've never seen before. Right? Like Moses did miracles, but Elijah and Elisha was doing stuff like we've never seen before. We've never heard of the stuff they were doing. Right? So then now you fast forward and Yahushua start doing some of this stuff. Now you see why after the people see him doing this stuff, they looking like, look, man, this got to be that prophet. This got to be him. This has to be the one. We haven't seen nothing like this since Elisha and Elijah, since Moses. Right? Let's jump back. This is uh, where we leave off. This is John chapter 6. What, what verse? Uh, verse 14. This is John chapter 6, verse 14. Watch what the book say. Then those men which had seen the miracle that Yahushua did said of a truth that of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. This is that prophet that should come into the world. Mm -hmm. When Yahushua therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Right. So when they were going to do what now? Make him king. They were trying to take him by force and make him the king. After they saw him do that. They said, this is that prophet. What they associated to that prophet is the king, which means the Messiah, right? Which means the, the ruler of Israel, the prophesied ruler of Israel. So when they saw that, they were looking like, this is it. Let's make him king. He knew they was about to do it, so he got out of Dodge. It's important to understand that. Yahushua knew, right? We're going to read later about the high priest being worried about what they just tried to do. High priest... The re part of the reason that they kill Yahushua, they kill him because they thinking like if these people are convinced that he's king and they try to make him king, the Romans are going to attack us. And we have a history, right? We have a history of these nations taking us over when we have a king. So we looking like, no, we need to make sure our next king is the right guy, because otherwise we're going to lose this war. Right. So they worried about that. Yahushua know that, too. So that's why he's looking like, no, nah, I can't let him make me king yet because it's I'm the right guy, but it's not the right time. Right. It's not the right time. Right. So let's keep going. And he entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark and Yahushua was come unto them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So right. So now listen, it's dark outside at this point. They in the sea. And then a great wind blew. So that made the sea level rise, right? Watch this. So when they had rolled about five or 20, 35 and 20 or 30 furlongs. So they on the road, they roll in the boat and they didn't win a couple yards, right? You know what I'm saying? They're going a long ways. But the sea level rising up because of this wind. Watch this. They see Yahushua walking on the sea. And <laughs> All of a sudden, Yahushua out there just walking in the middle of the sea. I mean, it's night. It's dark outside. You don't got no clear picture, but you looking like, hey, am I tripping? Or is that Yahushua walking? Like in the middle of the waves. Right? And Yahushua just sitting there. Because you, you got to understand psychologically who he is. This guy is diabolical. It's like, he's looking like, he know everybody about to look at him walking on some water and be like, what the heck? But he just casually just, hmm. I always believe he's looking at the stars like, oh, I created that one. Yeah, that's nice. 
You know what I'm saying? And just, just casually walking. And the people rowing, they trying to get to the other side. The wind blowing, the sea level rising, it might flood. And they sitting there going crazy. They looking like, oh, come on, come on, let's go. We got a little, here, switch off. Come on, my arm getting tired. All right, I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here. And they look over. What? You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro. <laughs> All right, why you stop rowing? Bro, man, just, I ain't got time for your stuff. No. Bro, look. You were walking over there. Yo, she was just like. You know what I'm saying? Watch him. Keep going. And drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But but he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land where they went. So look, they in the middle of the water. They trying their hardest to get where they trying to go. <sighs> Man, I'm tired. Here, your turn. You switch. Okay, ooh, ooh, I got it. He look over. While the other dude, while he getting the rest, he massaging his arms. He looking like, he look over. And like, that y'all? Hey, bro, bro, what? Y'all sure? It is y'all sure. That's crazy. So now they scared of him. Y'all sure was looking like, nah, man, it's good. It's me. And so they let him into the ship. They get into it. He get into it. As soon as he set foot in there, all of a sudden, they teleport to the land, to where they're trying to go. Right? In another place, it gives us more. We ain't got to get it right now. But in another place, it's probably the, the, the version of the story that y'all are super familiar with. Peter, right? He called Peter to come out and he said, yeah, you can walk on the water like me. And he called Peter to come out. And then Peter, he just told him, focus on me now. Look at me. Keep your eyes on me. And Peter came out and he walked on water with him. You know what I'm saying? He was walking on the water with him. And all of a sudden he said he took a couple steps and he started to sink. You know what I'm saying? And he, you know what I'm saying? He told Peter it's because you doubt it. You know what I'm saying? It's because you doubt it. But he was walking on the water too. Right. This part didn't tell that part of the story, but all that happened in this one event. Right. Then they teleported and they made it to the land just like that. You have to understand these people are looking like this guy. This comes right after just yesterday. He fed a whole bunch of people with five loaves. The day before that, I don't know if it was really the day before that, but a little bit before that, he then resurrected a little girl talking about she sleep. We all laughed at him. You know what I'm saying? We thought she was dead. He talking about she sleep. Then all of a sudden, the lady, the little girl actually got up, right? All these things are happening, and they're seeing this, and they're like, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to think. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Everything that I thought I understood is like, who is this guy? This guy is amazing. I got I to gotta teach the word, baby girl. Go sit down. Right? And so he's looking like, this guy is amazing. This guy is something special, right? Keep going. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one whereunto his disciples were entered, and that Yahushua went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit, there came another boat from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Yahushua was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Yahushua. All right, so this is the great him, multitude that's trying to catch up with them at this point, right? Keep going. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence comest thou hither? And Yahushua answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because Watch what he say. Of the Lord. He said, Verily, verily, he's saying truly. When you say verily, verily, it'd be like us saying, No, for real, for real, right? Like for real, for real. The reason why you was looking for me is not because of what? Not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Right? He's saying, y'all now, this group of y'all that's coming, y'all coming out here not because you saw the miracles. It's because your butt is hungry. <laughs> you know that when I gave up that bread and fish, that was some good bread and fish I cooked up. You know what I'm talking about? So you hungry. I know. I know what you're trying to do. So he's telling them, you came out here because you're hungry, not the miracle. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Which is different from what the first group. Remember, the first group, they was out there to see the miracles. Right? At the very beginning of the chapter, it said that the great multitude followed them because of the miracles. Now, 
this next group that followed him across the water, he's just looking like, nah, y'all but just hungry. You know what I'm saying? Y'all but just trying to get fed. Watch this. Keep going. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him that him hath God the Father seeth. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Yeah, right? So he said, look, this is what you need to focus on. Not the food that, that perishes. Not the food that gets old and spoiled. You need to focus on the food that the Most High God will give you that's everlasting. So after that, the people asked the question. They said, okay, so what should we do to work the works of God? You trying to teach us to work the works of God. What do I need to do? Right? Keep going. Watch this. Y'all sure answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Mm -hmm. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign show us thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does mm -hmm. thou work? Our fathers did eat men in the desert, and it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And mm -hmm. Yahushua said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Mm -hmm. For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Yahshua said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father has given me shall come to me. And Look, everybody that the Father has given me is going to come to me. Pay attention to what he's saying. Everybody that the Father has given me shall come to me. Watch this. I uh, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Right? Down. So everybody that the Father gives to me will come to me. And anybody who comes to me, I will no wise cast out. So we started off and we read Matthew chapter 7 where he said, depart from me, I never knew you. Although you prophesied in my name, although you cast out devils in my name, although you did many wonderful works in my name, still get away from me, I never knew you. He cast those folks out. Because they weren't given by the Father. So now we got to understand what does that mean to be given by the Father, right? He said, anybody that the Father gives to me, they're going to come to me. And anybody who comes to me, by no means am I going to cast them out. Watch this. Keep going. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Mm -hmm. This is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up again on the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone with everyone which seeth the son and believe on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up on the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Yahushua, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it right? that he says, I came down from heaven? They look at him like, why is this guy talking like he came down from heaven? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is he talking about? We know your mama, boy. We know your daddy. Like, what is he like? What is this guy's deal? Like, because he, he's talking and we know he's special, but then he gets to saying stuff that is like, okay, no, we saw you do all this. You know what I'm saying? We saw you feed all the people. Like, we we know you do, you're different, but at the same time, bro, I was there when you were born. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like, you did not come from, what is this stuff you're talking about coming from heaven? Right? So, some stuff is throwing him off that he's saying, right? They like, okay, on one hand, we know he's special. On the other hand, I feel like he's lying a little bit. Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? So let's hear it. Yahshua therefore answered and said unto them, Remember not among yourselves. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Right? So the more. only way you can come to him is if the Father draws you. Right? The Father first has to draw you. Then what else? And I will raise him up at the last day. So then after the father draws you, if the father then gives you to him, he comes to him. Then he said he will raise you up at the last day. Watch this. It is written in the prophets. And they it shall, is written in the prophets. What's written in the prophets? And they shall be all taught of God. Everybody. And they shall. What it really say is, and they shall be all taught of Yahuwah. That's where our name. This is where our name come from. Right. Taught of Yah. Right. Because what this quotes, when it says it is written, it's quoting Isaiah, right? Let's grab this. Is, uh, this is Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 54, verse uh, 10, maybe. 
It's Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. Is Isaiah chapter 54. Give me verse uh give me verse 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says Yahuwah, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with thy with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make the win windows of the uh, gates. And thy gates of carbuncles and oh, all. Oh no, no, he said I will make the he said I will make the windows of agate. Keep going. And all my that's a that's a agate is like a stone, right? Like a like a I think it's a stone. Yeah. And all thy borders of pleasant stones, and thy children, and all thy children shall be taught of Yahuwah. And he said, and all thy children shall be what? Taught of Yahuwah. Right. So this is what this is what Yahushua was quoting from when he said it is written and they shall all be taught of Yah. Right. He's saying all your children shall be taught of Yahuwah. Right. And Jeremiah prophesied the same thing to us. Right. Jeremiah. Y'all remember we read Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah. Uh, give me Jeremiah 31. We can just start at the top of it. It's Jeremiah chapter 31. It's Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Watch what the book say. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not All right. To the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I mm -hmm. was a husband unto them, saith Yahuwah. Yep. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says Yahuwah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And right, so the law will be written on their inward parts. He gonna be our God, and we shall be His people. That's a call back to Hosea, right? Remember Hosea, the prophet Hosea. All these prophets are saying the same thing, right? They they all come in at different times, different places, but they all saying the same thing. Keep going. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man. He said brother. they shall what? They shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man he, his brother, saying, "No, Yahuwah." He said crazy. nobody is ever going to be teaching again, telling their neighbor or their brother, no God, no Yahuwah. He said there won't be a reason for anybody to, won't be a reason for us to do what we're doing right now, right? Where I'm trying to teach y'all, look, man, y'all need to know God. Y'all need to learn about God. Y'all need, need to be taught. He said there won't be a reason for that to happen. Why? Watch this. For they shall all know me from the least. Everybody going to know from where? From the least of them into the greatest of them, says you. So the least in the kingdom. Remember last week we talked about the least a couple weeks ago too. We talked about the least in the kingdom and the great in the kingdom. The the Yahushua told us in Matthew chapter five that if you break the least of the law, you could be still least in the kingdom. But anybody who practices the law and teaches it, they will be great in the kingdom, right? So he said, from the least of them to the greatest, no matter what, all of them will know Yahuwah, right? So this is this is what Yahushua was quoting from. He's telling you that the first step in all this process is Yah has to draw you. Every week, Yahushua drops another little mysterious nugget on us, right? It's a lot of this stuff that hasn't been explained yet that we've read already. But he drops these little nuggets on us. And as we continue to read, it's going to be revealed what he's talking about, right? Right now, the nugget that he dropped is, Yah has to draw you first, and then he has to bring you to me. And anybody that he brings to me will be risen on the same day, and I'm not going to lose none of them. I'm not casting anybody away. So now what we need to understand is what does it mean to be drawn by Yah? Then he told us after that, right? After he told us, you have to first be drawn to me, and then you come to me, and then I will raise you up on the last day. Then he said, for it is written. They shall all be taught of Yah. Right? He's telling you 
We have to be taught. That is the only way. Because everybody who will be resurrected will be taught of Yah. That's why during the resurrection, we won't need anybody to come to us and say, hey, let me teach you about Yah. Right? Because the only people who make it there are the people who are obedient to him. The only people that, that saw his son and believed him enough to be obedient to what the son says. Right? Therefore, when, you, when your butt wake up again, ain't nobody going to need you to teach you about Yah. You've already proven yourself to, to Yahuwah that you can repent from sin and that you can be forgiven of your sin. Right? And therefore, he'll raise you up in the last day. Right. We're going to we're going to talk a little bit more about Yah drawing us and what that means. Right. What that looks like, what it means. How do we know it happened or not? Right. And we're going to talk about what it means that when he puts us in the hand of Yahushua, what does that look like? We're going to talk about what it means when Yahushua say, I can't lose none of them. Right. I'm not going to lose not one person. Right. We'll talk about a lot of that stuff. We're going to try to finish out this chapter. It's a long chapter. But we're going to try to finish out this chapter next week. But in the meantime, are there any questions? Any questions in the chat? Nope. Appreciate you, Sister Pam. Hey, you see that? You see that? Uh, the hermaphrodite dude that knocked out the girl in the Olympics, bro. Out of line. You know what made me <laughs> mad? You know what made me mad is when I was reading the article. They kept they they were trying their best not to say it was a dude, but saying that this person had more of an XY chromosome, which gave them these type of of abilities. You know what I'm saying? Which is not fair. You know, so was just not a fair comparison to other women in competitive sports. I'm like, no, it's a dude. Just call him a dude. It's a dude. So, so, but his situation is a little different, though. It ain't like it ain't like he was born a dude, or you know, kind of like with just a uh, a dude when he was a kid, and then decided to be a girl one day. He is a little different. So he apparently, from what I read, he is a hermaphrodite. So he got both parts. Right. Yeah, and so. So when they say that the Y chromosome or X, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? They're saying that technically, scientifically, he's a guy. You know what I'm saying? But he has both parts, apparently. You know what I'm saying? It's what, they, it's what I read. But still, that thing got a lie. <laughs> he, he hit him with, bow, bow, bow. He, it's like 40-something seconds. Baby girl went over there. She ran to her side. She like, I give up. <laughs> Yeah, that's that thing is out of line. Can you imagine working your whole life? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You boxing, training. You probably beating up every girl that you come across. Like, can't none of these girls mess with me. Wow, wow, wow. Knocking them out. Then you get there and they make you fight this thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's out of line. You got to fight a mutant. <laughs> that thing messed up. That thing's out of line. People ain't got no, like, they don't even consider. They don't even think. They don't even sit back. Like, I get that he probably got a rough life. I get it. I'm sympathetic to that, too, because I couldn't imagine being born like that, right? So I get it. Like, he probably got a rough life himself. But at the same time, you can't, just because you feel sorry for him, put him in an advantageous situation, make him fight with the dudes. Why he get to choose to be a girl? And fight with the girl. That's not a lot. So, yeah, that thing was funny. They got all types of wild stuff happening at this uh this uh, this darn Olympics. Oh yeah, yeah. Japanese and they were like, <laughs> now I'm talking about the Japanese one. You guys see the Japanese one? Cold game, like look like look like somebody from Naruto. He's like, look, bow. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see the other, bro. I don't know. I don't know if I saw the one you talking about. I thought you were talking about the uh, Japanese one. And I don't know if it's Japanese because I am live. So I know they're going. <laughs> I don't know if it's Japanese. You know what I'm saying? But the Asian one. Uh, I ain't even been watching the Olympics. 
All right. Well then let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and pray. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh fellowship. We uh we're gonna do the fellowship call on time tomorrow, y'all willing at uh four Pacific time. Sorry, I've been switching up the times on y'all lately. But uh we should be able to keep it tomorrow the to normal time. Um if anything come up in between time, please reach out, ask any questions or whatever. Otherwise, we'll talk at that point. And for anybody not joining the fellowship call, I will see y'all next week. Or, of course, y'all can always reach out to number is on the number is right here on the thing. Um, but all y'all Hebrews, please do not hit me up talking about nothing stupid. I don't want to talk to you about Edomites. I don't want to talk to you about Christians. I don't want to talk to you about none of that stuff. I just want to talk to you about the book and what it takes for a man or a woman to be saved. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all.